This video is about integrated information theory. I wanted to continue exploring modern scientific theories of consciousness, and this part is dedicated to integrated information theory. Previously, I used the term qualia a lot. A moment of conscious awareness. To recap, qualia is a subjective experience. You feeling the world from inside your brain. Philosophers call these ineffable, raw feelings qualia. And our inability to connect physical phenomenon to these raw feelings, our inability to explain and share our own internal qualia, is known as the explanatory gap. Oh, what is happening to me? Am I dead? Am I, am I still alive? Those aren't the questions you should be asking. A really ambitious goal of all consciousness theories is to address a hard problem. How does a clump of neurons in our brain give a rise to the subjective intrinsic experience? And also why? Philosopher David Chalmers gives this question a name. Hard problem of consciousness. There's also a category of easy problems, such as how a sensory system works, how data is processed in the brain, how specific wavelengths activate the visual system, and so on. These are problems that can be analyzed through structure and functions and are susceptible to standard methods of cognitive science. Susceptible, succeb, su actually, sus they're directly susceptible. Hard problem focuses on phenomenology, not a specific mechanism that gives rise to subjective experience. You can explain every little function of being awake and being responsive, monitoring, and still there will be a question why does it have to be associated with subjective experience? So the hard question is different kind of question, and currently scientific method doesn't have a good handle on it. Integrated information theory was proposed by a neuroscientist, Julia Tannoni. It is one of the leading theories of consciousness. It asks a pretty bold question. Can we capture the experience of self through a mathematical model? Pretty ambitious. <laughs> According to IIT, what all experiences have in common is that they're both informative and integrated. Informative meaning that they provide this unique combination of particular smell, sound, image. And all of that information creates experience as a whole, and you can split that experience. In order to study consciousness, we need to introduce a certain measure that will characterize the intensity of a given experience. Phi lies in the heart of IIT and it characterizes how conscious the system is, how integrated internal behavior of a system is. The more consciousness, the larger phi is. Uh, now, the, the actual definition of phi uh, has changed over time. You know, it's changed from, from one paper to another, and it's not always clear how to apply it. And, you know, there are many technical objections that could be raised against this criterion. There are many ways a system can have low phi. One is to score low on information. For example, a single photodiode that can be on and off, it carries very little information about anything. Another example is a camera sensor, sufficiently large array of information, but individual photodiodes in the sensor are causally independent of one another. Their state depends only on the level of light each diode encounters. The information conveyed by the sensor as a whole is not more than what's conveyed by its part independently. 
Another example of a non-zero phi is a split brain situation. Imagine a network of neurons divided into two completely separate parts. Each half of that network have a non-zero phi, but the phi of the whole system is going to be zero. There are no causal connections between these two individual parts. Consciousness exists and it matters to you and me. Intrinsically, consciousness is exclusive. An experience excludes all other possible experiences. Phi is the measure of consciousness or how integrated information is. What is it missing? It's not missing levels of consciousness because more integrated my consciousness is more connected by different parts of my brains. So higher phi it is, meaning higher consciousness it is. So it's not missing to address a question of levels of consciousness. But it's missing something else, and I don't know what. Like all series, IAT will stand or fail based on whether its predictions are testable. Most likely, testing it will require measuring phi, which comes with its own set of difficulties. To measure phi, you as a scientist need to know all the possible ways system could behave, even if it actually never behaves that way. Unfortunately, most of the time we only have information to the dynamic of the system, what it actually does rather than what it can do. That is certainly true for brains. Another problem with measuring phi is what do you even regard as variable? A neuron firing one versus not firing zero, a level of neurotransmitters in neuron, a firing rate. Scott Aronson, computer scientist known for his work in quantum computing, a pretty verbal critic of IIT, he points out that it's easy to construct physical systems that have enormous values of phi, meaning that there are informative and integrated, but yet intuitively we fail to regard them as intelligent. An example of that would be an error correcting code. How does a clump of neurons in our brain give a rise to the subjective intrinsic experience? And also why? It seems like integrated information doesn't really explain consciousness, it just postulates it. But what does it all mean? Yeah. Which means that it doesn't mean anything. Now, if you'll excuse me, I need to go take a shower so I can't tell if I'm crying or not.